I'm Craig Branger. I'm uh, five years I've been here full time. Five years prior to that, I've been in the industry 30 years plus. I have a shop at home. I live and breathe machining. Uh, my big goal here is to find students jobs. I mean, there's so many machining jobs out there. I get so many people from industry saying, hey, what do you got for students? So I try to try to do the best job I can. And I teach on a different, I never went to school to be a teacher. I went to school to be a machinist. So that's what I am through and through. And it works really well to show them some shortcuts that you won't find otherwise somewhere else in, until you've been in the industry. So it's kind of nice. Hi, my name's Richard Gramland. Uh, I came from industry as a machinist. I originally went through a tool and die program at a, at a different college. Uh, I teach the second year machine tool. Um, I'm going on 28 years now. Uh, my first five was on our Eden Prairie campus. We had a full machine shop down there at the time also. Being a farm kid, I remember 20 below holding a trouble light for my dad working on a combine and I thought, I don't want to do this. I don't like working outside, I don't like the weather, and I don't like the cold. Machining, you're inside with the computers, 70 degrees year round. It's nice. Not a lot of windows, but I mean the climate is wonderful in there and now the machine shops are so clean, you could almost eat off the floor. That's a big... So when I started going to school, it's like machine shops are dark and dreary was the big thing. I think of a blacksmith shop, but now everything's so neat and clean. That's a neat thing. I think the perspective is people think it's heavy work. You're lifting big bars of steel. There's overhead cranes on everything. Uh, they think it's dirty. They think it's smelly. Granted, there's an oil smell or a coolant smell that you got to get over, but they think it's noisy. Machines now are so quiet. If you're running all CNC's, they're enclosed. You get no mist, no nothing like that. It's pretty clean. And the thing is, the pay now, oh my gosh, it's the pay is going up all the time. They said that for an average, and you can quote me if I'm wrong, but I think every six machinists that retire, there's only one to fill that position. Uh, the difference between a uh, uh, top-notch machinist whether it's a machinist or tool and die mold um, is number one, are they taking notes unless you got a photographic memory, which I don't have. Um, take good notes, you ask good questions, you practice, you're here, you got good attendance. That's huge with employers as attendance. That's one of the things they'll ask about is how is their attendance? Are they, are they dependable? You could be the best machinist in the shop, but if you're not dependable, I'd rather take the dependable person myself. But for a student, if they like working with their hands, if they like making models, if they like doing anything with their hands, that's when you start thinking, is this something I want to do? And hopefully the high school or middle school has some type of technical part. I don't care if it's woodworking, welding, machining. We got to get back to the high schools and get more manufacturing inside us high schools. And I don't know why they went away from it. I mean, my students right now, 27 to 30 bucks an hour to start. You come in as a junior, you finish as a senior, you graduate from high school, graduate from college, you're 18, you're making 30 bucks an hour. Well, things to know before you get started. Um, uh, younger people these days grew up with computers and there's a lot of resources online. Uh, a lot of them, uh, my, even my adult students will go to YouTube and so on and there's just a huge amount of information on any topic. There's a lot on machining and I'd say start experimenting there. Uh, an organization that we're involved with is MPMA, Minnesota Pre Precision Manufacturing Association. They've got a website um, that you can go to and it's got a homepage with a lot of local uh, companies in there. Um, it's their homepage and a lot of you don't say if they're hiring or not and what they're hiring on. That's a good resource there. Um, I tell my students about that um, and so on. Um, taking a tour, coming in, talking to us. Math. Math is probably the biggest thing. Machinists don't talk in fractions, we talk in decimals. So to me, 5 sixteenths is 312 thou and 5 tenths. That's how I see everything. Even when I'm doing carpentry, my kids hate it because I'm not at a half inch, I'm at half point five hundred, you know, and that's how I talk all the time. So for them to get into math, I mean, I can do adding, subtracting, multiplying, dividing, and trig like you wouldn't believe. And I mean, I can see angles, I know how to figure angles out just without even using a calculator, just because I've been doing it so long, but I really, I really strived in math in high school, so that's what really was good for me. But so get into math, blueprint reading. If you can look at a print and understand how it's laid out, how you would manufacture it, where your datums are, stuff like that, it makes it really important. And I know high schools are doing more blueprint reading, maybe SolidWorks, maybe CAD CAM, something like that. Yeah, if they got that in school, if you can hit that way, you're doing real well. I got into machining because I was looking for a job that I'd find interesting and something that I'd actually be able to work. I'm not a guy that sits on my butt all the time, so and I found that this is a job that keeps you on your feet moving and you can make really good money. I decided to go into machining because my dad is also a machinist, so that helped me take a little step into the machining world. 
but I also just wanted to try because I was doing PSEO while I was in high school so I was able to just see what I wanted to do after my life in high school. Okay. Come in and check out the facility, see if it's something you like. Big machines scare people and I usually catch that in the first semester, students are like, I'm afraid of this machine. Okay, are you gonna overcome that? If you can't overcome that being fearful of a machine, then maybe this ain't the trade for you. If they've got ideas in their head what machining is and I come in and explain and show them parts we've made, oh, they're like, you made that? I'm like, yeah, we make this in school. You'll make the same thing. The, the criteria I would use after going through the uh, process myself as a student, um, I would look at the school itself. I'd look at the reputation of the program. I'd, I'd, a uh, big thing that students uh, like to check, which is a very good reason, and that's employability. How many jobs are out there in this? Most industry people uh, right now want that degree or diploma to say that you've took two years out of your life, you finished something, which is your college, and then you went and got a job. That's what I push most, so trying to keep retention with our program is really huge. What happens though is people have lives, they have families, they have jobs, I understand that. Maybe they get put to another part of their company that's in a different part of the United States or the world, then they come back. I keep their records for 10 years. So if they come back within 10 years, they take off right where they left from. But to get that signed piece of paper is really huge to industry. About 50% of the companies like the degree uh, going beyond the diploma because of the soft skills. Okay, so you're learning uh, to, to uh, uh, work with engineers, the customer, other machinists, the inspector, and so on. You're learning skills that'll help you do that instead of just coming in and machining. A good thing to do is to just get a start in a program. What your best thought of what you want to do. I tell people a 30-year life here at work, if without overtime even, you better like what you're doing. And so when my students come through, they've got technical electives they can take, and I tell them. Uh, talk to me. Uh, you don't have to just take it in machining. I uh, dabble around a little bit, take a welding class, talk to the welding instructor, see which class would be the best. Take a fluid power class, hydraulics, pneumatics, take an electronics class, uh, take a CAD class, and see what you'd really like to do with, with your day, uh, with your life. I come here every day and I learn something. I learn from the students. They work in, they work in different shops. I'll show them how to do something the way I do it, and then I'll say, hey, that's, that, that, that's nice, but at our shop we do it this way, and I'll take a look at it and say, I like that better, or I like my way better, or something in between, and we all leave learning something. Mm -hmm. And that's, that's the goal, is to find employment, and to learn something new every day safely. Very Come a machinist, you'll make a great living. I mean, you would never have to worry about anything again in your life. If you have a house, you could repair it. You could do all the electrical, all the plumbing. As long as you're a machinist, you know what tight tolerances are. You know how to do something with knowledge. You can do anything. There would be nothing you can't do. Fix your car, do whatever you want. You can do everything. That's what's nice about it.